Well, hello my beautiful family. Before we get started today, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to my first ever three members. Uh, we have Leah, Jork, sorry if I'm saying that wrong, and Papillon Purple. Thank you guys, I love you. Let's get the show started with Rob and Sophie. Sophie's on her way to see Rob for the first time in two months. She's only packed one bag because she doesn't know how well this visit's gonna go. So she walks into Rob's new apartment and he notices right away that she only has one bag. He doesn't look happy or excited to see her. But Sophie and I definitely do have a lot we need to work through and I definitely have to figure out a better way to communicate with her and to let her know how I feel. Then Rob motions over to a note that he wrote her with a flower that he swiped out of somebody's yard. At first she was like, oh, this is so sweet. And then quickly realized that he gave her a to-do list. Washing off dishes before putting in the sink, putting dirty clothes in bin, put makeup and hair products back after use. Don't get mad at me. <coughs> when you don't get what you want what were you thinking doing that and it's not even like your apartment is clean and organized it still looks like the garage you lived in you're basically just telling me to clean up after myself Thanks. which would be really okay. that is not even ever brought up in our sophie's like rob we've got some major issues we need to work through and as soon as i walk through the door you hit me with being messy about my makeup she must have been in the house for like two minutes before they started arguing. He's like, I'm just looking for ways for us to have less issues and I would like you to clarify what I can do so that we don't fight like this. Why can't you just clarify for me what I can do because I don't want to have these interactions because Stop these Stop online cheating on me, controlling me. How am I controlling? Then she says, and I, I, can't, <laughs> I can't believe that this is what they're fighting about. She's like, tell me Rob, do you or do you not count how many toilet paper squares I'm using? Who counts toilet roll papers of people using Who it? Who uses That's a weird. whole roll of toilet paper in a day? It's not a day. You'll literally sit in the bathroom and just hang out in the bathroom for hours. I don't even know what to say here. It is so ridiculous. I can see both sides of their argument, but at the end of the day, this shouldn't be an issue. They have way bigger fish to fry. Unfortunately though, I think he lost as soon as he started raising his voice to her. You shout at me in the home, even now, okay? You raise your voice at me. I think what will fix a marriage is you get some therapy. And Rob's like, I will do anything you want me to do. Possible that I can think of to do whatever you would like me to do to, to help you be comfortable with me. And I did sort of feel bad for Rob because he has leveled up his life with a nicer apartment, he got a new car, he wants his wife with him in the home and Sophie is holding the cheating over his head like he has to earn her forgiveness. I understand that she's still hurt, but you've got to either work on it together or cut ties. You can't just leave him in this state of purgatory. So he sits down with her and she tells him that if she stays over there, they're going to keep on fighting. It takes one thing for one of us really to start arguing. about to stay over? Like, why do I have to beg my wife to stay? You don't to have stay? to beg, but you have to... She says she wants her visits to be progressive. I thoroughly disagree with this. You are a wife now. This isn't your boyfriend and you can cherry pick when you guys are hanging out and going out and having fun. You need to stay there when the going gets rough. Remember the vows in marriage? Better or worse, richer or poor, sickness and health. When it gets hard, you made a promise. So she gets up gives him a hug and I'm like, how are you gonna give him a hug as you're on your way out the door? You're spiraling. I'm going. Goodbye. It's a new day. Rob and Sophie haven't seen each other in a couple of days and he's decided to organize a date for them to try and woo her heart. He takes her to a country dance hall to learn some line dancing. He's got his cowboy hat on. Sophie rolls up in this really tiny little outfit and I didn't like it. Again, she looked very uncomfortable. He sits her down and says, last time they were together, I, I was an idiot and I gave you this chore list. So I've written something else for you today. It's it's too long for me to include the clip of his poem, so I'm just gonna read it for you guys. You deserve love every single day in every little and big way. So here's my vow that I'll keep too. I'll do my part in loving you. Let me give you the love you deserve. Let me in and let love preserve. Together we will make a lifetime of memories and build this road to endless possibilities. Hello. 
that was really nice. Thank you. That was very sweet. Sophie loved the poem. I thought it was really sweet. He's never done anything like this for me before. It's an amazing step. If it continues like this, I will move home. The problem is, it's not going to be poems and roses every day. You guys are gonna have hard days and bad fights, but you gotta work through it. Marriage is hard. So they walk in. Sophie is surprised to see everyone actually dressed up like a cowboy. She says in England, you'd only really see it for Halloween. I'm from the country and I like horseback riding. Yeehaw! What? So they're instructed how to dance. They're having a good time messing up this dance together. Then Sophie's like, hey, there's something I want to tell you. One of my best guy friends from England is coming to America and he's gonna visit me. I really want you to meet him. I don't sound, it doesn't sound like I have much of a choice. I value my friends, obviously, and they're a part of my life. Rob is not happy about this. It feels like Sophie just threw a wrench and he's already got plenty of wrenches to deal with. The fact that he's gonna fly all the way across the ocean to see her, it doesn't make me feel very good at all. I was watching this one with my husband, finally, thank you babe, and he completely agreed with Rob. He said he would be very uncomfortable with it. I think this early in the relationship with all of these major red flags that they have, bringing in someone that could potentially make your partner jealous, it's just really stupid. Why? Just wait. Rob's like, this dude better be ugly or I'm gonna have a problem. This dude doesn't look like, like Gollum, then I don't like it. Okay, well he's coming to visit anyway. I'm so glad that we're done with those two. Let's move on to the next train wreck. Ed and Liz. Liz looks so horrible in this introduction, I'm sorry. So they're in the kitchen making breakfast together. Ed is like, whoa, we got some flour on the counter. Let me clean it up. Not a big deal, right? Like this doesn't need to escalate. This doesn't need to be a problem. He's just wiping down the counter. Liz is like, there's not even a mess. Have you not seen yourself clip pasta? It's a little bit of flour. I don't make this big of a mess. Babe, there was no mess. That's when I realized that she is also extremely toxic. She allowed this to become an ugly argument in front of Riley and it it really bothered me. This whole mess right here is you because you don't know how to pick up yourself after pasta. More? Are you gonna smile? Then little Riley's like, hey, how about you guys stop talking about it, AKA stop arguing in front of me and we can clean this mess when we're all done. And Ed's like, yes, Riley, that's a great idea. I cannot believe that I am setting, <laughs> siding with Ed on this one, but I really don't think that he did anything wrong. And I would have hoped that Liz, who is the mother, would have made a better attempt to keep things lighthearted and fun. So later that day, Liz gets together with her mom and grandma to go wedding dress shopping. Liz says she is a major tightwad and looking for a dress on a budget and her family doesn't like Ed. Our priority for her is her happiness. I see things that I would have never put up with. She comes out in her first dress. I think it sucks. My husband said it was cute and her mom tells her that she would like to talk to Ed before the wedding and try and clear the air with him and Liz does not want her to. Red flag. But I don't want to go backwards. I just want to move forward because... I know. And I, that's all I want is for you guys to move forward. The mom is like, hey, you know, I just want to try and clear the air and I think that would even help you to relax and be more comfortable. I don't want you to be like too straightforward because I give that to him enough. I couldn't believe that she said that, but she's crying and her mom comes over and comforts her and Liz is basically sobbing. I'm like, good Lord, this is supposed to be a joyous moment and you're sobbing in a wedding dress. Liz comes out in her next dress and I hate it. The fit for her shape was a big no for me, but she loved it, so she got it, even though it was nearly a thousand buckaroonies. This dress is about a grand. It just is way more than what I ever imagined spending. I, I can just picture Gino squirming in his chair listening to that. Liz tells us that the next day is the 4th of July, so Ed and the family will be together. I guess we're gonna see that train wreck next week. Moving on. We're in the car with Gino and Jasmine. Jasmine's crushed about the news that her children won't be able to come to America for two years. 
I cannot even think about it. I'm very disappointed. She cries in every episode. I am so over her. Don't say it's going to take two years. That is the worst case. It can be before that. Gino has his big boy hat on, apparently. Jasmine says, you messed up the paperwork, Gino. It's your fault this is happening. I don't want any more mistakes. We need a lawyer. You are not a lawyer, and that's the part, I mean, that, uh, that's the part that I want you to understand, you know. You could have good intentions, and I get it, but... She's like, Gina, you screwed up my life. And he goes, wow, that's quite a statement. But he's not budging of all the stupid crap you have sent her money for. You're not going to pay for the kids? Wait a minute. Why doesn't she have any money? What the hell, Jasmine? I can't I can do it me. myself. But the lawyer does it or me, that two years that he's mentioned is not going to change. Jasmine takes a deep breath and starts crying, saying, you promised you were going to do this, Gino. And he's like, yeah, and I am. I'm going to do the paperwork, Jasmine. <sighs> then she starts ugly crying. Please hire a lawyer, you know. And I'm not, but I'm not going to use the word. I cannot take that real. No. Look at what you I cannot believe he is putting his foot down for this. He is willing to die on this hill. And he's going to die. Yeah, so because of the wedding and how costly it was, I can't afford a lawyer. Jasmine is sobbing in the restaurant. She says, Gino, when it comes to my children, money means nothing. And he immediately says, no. I get no appreciation for what I've done. So what do you that want me, me? What do you want me to do? To make a study of you because you brought me here? No, but all I get is a lot of bull Okay, what has happened to Gino? Where did he find a backbone? Who is this guy? He's like, Jasmine, all you do is bitch and moan about everything that I do. This is bull to you. Me crying over my kids because I'm not gonna see them in two years. She starts pleading with him begging him to please help her. And I'm begging telling you, you, I don't have $5,000 to pay for a lawyer. I'm going to do it myself. He's going to do it himself, Jasmine. She says, I don't know how this is going to work. You're not ready to be a father, Gino. You don't give a oh, about me. Oh, oh. All you care is about oh, you I and you. Well, now, okay. so they keep bickering. Screwed Jasmine keeps ugly crying. Head. She says it's her own fault, and Gino slides out of his chair and walks out of the restaurant. I have never seen this side of Gino. Like, I want to go back to Panama. Hasn't she said that in every episode? Moving on. Nicole and Mahmoud have woken up. She got him donuts. He doesn't like donuts. He likes real food. He also didn't wear the little booty shorts that she bought him. I have to keep my religion as I do in Egypt. Like, I'm never going to, like, change anything about my religion. So they go down to the pier. She takes him into a little shop and says, would you like a shirt like this? At first, I thought she was just joking, you know, messing with him, giving him a hard time. But it was like she, she kept holding it up to him. Like, she was seriously considering buying it. And I'm like, what is wrong with you? What does she not? Is she just dumb? Is that, is she just stupid? I would love to see Mahmoud in a bikini shirt. He could wear that to bed. I should have went and got that for his pajamas. <laughs> She's weird. So they're having a decent time. And as they're walking the pier, he notices a Muslim woman standing there wearing her burqa. Nicole's like, oh yeah, you like that, huh? You like that Mahmoud? So after that little incident though, Mahmoud, I, I'm, Put your ass back on the plane, you go what? back to Egypt, I don't care. What? He's like, what? Oh, really? Okay, goodbye. So he's walking away and she's chasing after him. Like, what is wrong with you? You just told him you were gonna buy my plane ticket out. And now you're shocked that he's walked away? That was it. Finally, we have Kobe and Emily. They're all in their tribal attire headed to meet Kobe's family. Everyone is mortified to be driving because they don't have designated lanes. <laughs> 
it's kind of chaotic and with the babies in the car I also would be a little bit scared as they approach the home he reminds them that right now things are a bit chaotic because of the war the women are very nervous Emily and her parents are a little freaked out and that might not translate well if they act this way around my family Kobe is worried that if the family walks up looking and acting like they're scared for their life his family would likely be offended because my family is really proud of our Cameroonian culture. So they walk up to the house. Everyone is all smiles. They are overjoyed to have Kobe back home and to meet his children and his wife. It was a really beautiful moment. I loved it. I just wanted to throw in the importance of family when you're looking for a partner. Just keep in mind that you marry into that family. So if you can't stand your partner's parents, or whatever, that will be years and years of holidays and get-togethers that you likely won't enjoy. So it's just something to consider, okay? That's all. I love this part. The whole family's hanging out, having a great time. Then they go inside and his father gives to Emily's dad a plant as a peace offering to the family. Kobe's getting super emotional as he explains the meaning behind the gesture. Oh, I loved it. Thank the Lord for this family being on this season because everyone else sucks. He never knew that I could get a wife. <laughs> so they sit down to eat and the dad tells them it's time for them to have a traditional marriage with his family. Emily and her parents are like, huh? <clears throat> We're gonna get married. Again. I kind of feel like this was played up through editing to look like it was going to be some big ordeal. I really don't think it will be. In my mind, I'm imagining just like a ceremony, not a full-blown wedding like what we do here. But I have no idea. Did you ever think we were going to get a dowry for one of our daughters? <laughs> <laughs> I mean. Yeah, how much do you think I'm worth? I mean, how? what's my, what's the dowry? Your dad's like, we should be paying them to get you out of here. We should be giving them money. Here, <laughs> take her. The mom, on the other hand, isn't very happy. I think she's afraid it's like some sort of ceremony where Emily is going to be giving away all of her freedoms or rights or something. It was just a little bit too much for me. It feels to me like I am giving them my daughter in trade for goods. They're old school. Who cares? Emily and Kobe are already legally married in America, so chill. The family is asking questions about what the wedding here looks like in Cameroon, and he tells them, oh, there will be a lot of people, all my friends and my family will be there, probably like a hundred people. A hundred people. So do we, a hundred people? A hundred people? <laughs> <laughs> there wasn't a hundred people at your first wedding. Emily is now very stressed out realizing that she's going to have to help prepare this wedding. She's like, I don't know how to cook their food. I don't really understand their culture yet. It's gonna be fun. It's a fun thing. It's a fun thing. Tune in next week to see Kobe's friends tell him he won't be happy in his marriage. How dare you? Have many people that have gone out there, at least 90% have never been happy. Sophie's friend from England walks in and he's handsome. Oh, hell no. Nah. He's that look. He's a hot dude. She lied to me. And Liz's mom makes an attempt to clear the air with Ed. You, you seem to be a little bit um, tense. If I do? Big time. Stupid Nicole runs around the streets of stupid LA looking for stupid Mahmoud. I can't even imagine if this falls apart in one day. That's it for this one, you guys. Leave me some comments below. Hit that subscribe button. And thank you again for the members. I love you guys, and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Even in the morning, recaps are never boring. You know you want to watch it, our favorite TV show. Let me check my mic, my camera real quick. Put the kids to bed, it's going to get sick. Go grab a snack, because we're keeping it fit. It's time to start the show.